I don't actually know if that's an aspic. That might just be a jello. But it's eggs and shrimp. And that is just not appetizing at all. That, that, I, that looks repulsive. That looks like something Katie should be eating on her channel. Um, so maybe I'll send this to Katie so she has a fresh recipe to test, or, test with. Um, but if, I didn't even notice the bottom of the picture. You can see the shrimp are sitting there formed against the edges. Like they're tortured. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. All right, this is Patrick, trusty huckster mercantile, going on a uh, expedition at Antiques, no, Affordable Antiques of Naperville, uh, here in Naperville, Illinois. I checked this place out once before, but did not have much time, so I'm hoping to come back in. I was pretty impressed with what I saw the first time, and uh, hoping I will be impressed yet again. Uh, this also happens to be a location I'm considering for a... Uh, booth if I decide to reopen another booth so uh, kind of scoping out the uh, layout just for that as well So uh, wish me luck as I go into affordable antiques of Naperville So right in the door we enter the hall of glass a lot of clear glass uh, Welcomes you right at the front of the store, but you walk into the booth you start getting into the colors of the depression glass so a lot of pink uh, looks great. Got a little bit of the sun coming in the window, so it's like showing up really nice. I always talk about the ruby glass. Never really, you know, look at it too much. Seems like every time I pick up ruby glass, it's uh, Avon. So kind of steer clear of that. But let's see. I think I brought my Suzanne from number 17 vintage. The little blue light, so we get to do a little test of show your glow. So this is an honor of Tim over the years. We are showing the glow all over the place. That glow in this one? Mm. This one, I thought it's Vaseline. This one doesn't seem to be glowing as much. With some great glow in the little sherberts. This is the case that's so popular, I should learn more about the uranium glass and the different makers. Um, just haven't uh, had the motivation to do it, but uh, happy to uh, show your glow and uh, give everyone a little bit of eye candy first thing at Affordable Antiques of Naperville. So this great Hoosier cabinet is housing uh, an even greater collection of Pyrex, uh, which is actually throughout this entire booth. So I definitely need to get that uh, deep dive in with Tim from over the years. Uh, on Pyrex because you've got the butter print set of four bowls will not separate for $2.95 four dot bowls $3.49 opal white pink so you've definitely got some of the higher end uh, pieces on display here and I kind of have to take their word for it because I do not follow the trends or the pricing on Pyrex, but they've got quite a bit to choose from. And as you rotate through, you end up seeing more and more of this. All kind of a vintage kitchen look. We've got some great uh, cookie jars, more Pyrex on the stand, an entire rolling cart of Pyrex. So it is Pyrex heaven here. Not sure what the prices are, but uh, look at this. We've got Betty's Bargain Bags. One box full of mixed vintage retro kitchen goodies. All different kitchenalia. Take a chance. $9.95. Hmm. Not sure I'm willing to take that chance, but kind of a fun idea here at this booth at Affordable Antiques. So as I was looking at the Pyrex in this booth, I came across this uh, individual shelf with these like they kind of almost look like really flat teapots or something built into them and i didn't know what they were and as i pulled them out they are laundry soap flake containers or shakers this one still has the lid on it uh this one i think did not so you basically drop in all the soap and you've got a little like built-in laundry flake soap uh, container I've never even heard of these this is a very this is a very cool collection uh, this one is metal this one is wood 
This one is wood. This one is metal. And that one still has the lid on it. I have a feeling that all these should have had lids on them, but got separated over time. Another wood one. Another wood one. That one did have the lid. And then another wood one here. So again, this is just one of those cases it's fun to check out places like this because who knows, you might find a collection that uh, you are in desperate need of starting. So I wanted to highlight uh, what I found in this booth because these are relatively common. Uh, this blue and white porcelain, they're usually dated. They have them for Mother's Day. This is the Christmas one uh, from 1968. And these are the Bing and Grondel uh, Danish uh, porcelain. But what I found interesting was this set, and these, you can tell the blues are a little bit different. These are also Christmas plates. This also happens to be from 1968. But this one's a Porsgrund porcelain from Norway, which is a really high quality porcelain, just like Bing and Grondel. I just didn't know that they did, that Porsgrund did uh, these types of Christmas plates. So this one's from 1968, it has kind of the darker blue has a really pretty but then this one they went like all the really lighter blue and it's just the way it's decorated I think it's just you know it's still a look it's still not gonna be everyone's taste I mean you're talking about a collectible plate for Christmas in 1971 but just the the way they're painted and the fact that they are a porcelain that you don't really run into all that much here in the United States I think makes these a little bit more special and I thought it was kind of fun they're only five bucks nice Sometimes it's shocking to think that kids ever grew up without, you know, permanent injury. So this is a knock and pop, educational, appealing, and it specifically says, safe for baby. Well, I don't know who made that determination, probably someone without children, because it literally comes with a wooden mallet. I'm thinking that's not particularly safe for baby. Does a good job hammering down all the little pegs, but I could also see it hammering down the brain of my sibling. So, fun little toy, product of the famous Slick Toy line. Sounds like a huckster if I've ever heard one. Uh, educational toy. Unfortunately, I don't see anything on a date on it, but I'm, I'd be thinking 40s or 50s maybe. Uh, very simple graphics. Fun item. And, uh, yep, somehow that child survived. So travel items are popular pretty much all the time. Vintage travel is great for, particularly when you've got airlines that no longer exist, like Pan American. Air France still exists, but you've got these vintage posters. And you've got this kind of this cool little device with this little, you know, part on the top. And I, hopefully I'll be able to see it when you push down. It spins a little bit. It is a plunger style ashtray. So just like vintage travel, everyone likes to smoke. And uh, this is a cool piece. Airplane or airline plunger ashtray. Uh, it was on sale. It was 100 bucks. Now it's marked down to 75. Probably worth every penny of it. Uh, definitely not something I'm going to pick up, but uh, a very cool uh, piece. And there you go, Karen. A little ode to San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge. Not sure the age on this. There's no age uh, to it. It lists Parker Brothers in Salem, Massachusetts, New York, and London. So there might be some connection there. Um, but it is a box of kindergarten beads. And I'm feeling these are pretty old because I don't think they would put something this small in a kindergarten class anymore. Um, but it's just kind of like little stringing beads. All wooden with the cords. Just kind of a neat little set, but you know, what? put those into a jar and then you've got kind of a cool box with some great graphics. 18 bucks, you know, good price, but not something I'm gonna pick up, but kind of a, a, fun, uh, a fun addition and a fun item for the right decor. So this is a pretty cool item I thought worth uh, highlighting. It's a shadow box. It looks like there's some age to the shadow box, but I don't know if it was put together at the time of these events or if it was put together after the fact. But it looks like we have a wedding uh, portrait, you know, kind of hidden in the back underneath her hat. 
And if you look really close, it looks like that might be the same style hat that she was wearing with her veil uh, in the picture. So I believe all these pieces do go together. It looks like their wedding topper. Uh, and based on that, he was a mili in the military. And then this Valentine in the back says Camp Hood, Texas. So they must have been uh, in Texas. And then this book looks like it says Service Prayer Book, as I think what it says. And kind of get it is, yeah, it looks like it's focusing there. So just a very cool vignette. Looks like some pieces have fallen off. So like I'm not sure what that little brown piece is supposed to be. Um, so, you know, it's, at this point you can see some of the veil was glued to the top and it's all, it's starting to release itself by gravity. Um, $98, uh, probably worth every penny, you know, just kind of as a cool decorative item. Um, I don't know. I think if these were all together, it's, it's sad that it was, it left the family. Uh, and there's really doesn't look like there's any information on whose family it is. Um, so be great for, you know, even a wedding decor, uh, or just kind of a, a cool vintage item for somebody's home. So I decided to highlight this piece partly because I'm not 100% sure what it is. I uh, did a little bit of asking around. First, it is the grasshopper pattern, which hopefully it'll zoom in well enough here that you can see there is a grasshopper there. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this pattern I was able to find uh, currently for sale as early American pressed glass, you know, 1880s to 1900. Uh, I still love clear. You know, it is pressed glass. It's molded. Uh, you can see some seam lines are there running along the foot. Um, and the question was, was, is it a spooner or is it a celery vase? And we've determined that we think it is a celery vase because it's pretty tall and it's also fairly sturdy. So because it's footed, you would have put the celery in there, which at the time was a very expensive vegetable. Uh, it would have looked great, but it wouldn't have toppled over because it's uh, you know, sturdy enough to hold those stalks. Um, and it's a little bit too tall compared to some of the spooners that we found. But regardless, it was a pretty cool piece. Not picking it up. Uh, absolutely worth every penny at 20 bucks. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but I am not trying to create my Victorian dinnerware set. Uh, so this is going to stay behind. Uh, but thought it was a fun item to share. So sometimes when you're shopping, you end up seeing, you know, cool pieces of copper like this. And independently, this is a beautiful looking bowl. Uh, maybe has a little bit of age to it, you know, but the ring is kind of, you know, loosely made, you know, not necessarily the highest quality, but a reasonable price on there, sale price, 16 bucks. But then you see the real deal, and this is vintage copper. So this one must have initially had a uh, stand or something because this little star pattern on the bottom, it doesn't sit upright without tilting. But you've got this heavy gauge lid, which I can take off. You have some great age on the inside. You've got some marks along the side where either it was repaired or where the copper was bent there. So, you know, it really shows some nice signs of how it was put together. Another beautiful mold piece. Uh, if you follow Katie from Vintage and Vinyl, she has a collection of copper molds. And as she's talked, the ones that do not have the edge, uh, so you can see this one has a clean edge at the edge of the mold, uh, those are the older ones. I don't necessarily know how to date it, but even if you just compare you know, the patina of these coppers against this piece that's a little bit newer, um, just looks great in comparison. And then we even throw in the little cauldron here that is holding the vintage rolling pin. So you know, no matter what, however you want to use it, uh, some great additional accents to your home uh, with uh, a variety of metalware. And if you really want to attract the carriage trade, you have a carriage warmer. So this, another piece of copper, uh, solid piece or, you know, piece molded together with a little uh, screw top lid on here. You open it up that I would have thought you'd hold it with maybe coals so it's kind of a small hole so maybe you just put hot water in there and uh, you put this at your feet in a carriage or the edge of your bed end of your bed you know basically you do a bed warmer another great piece of copper some great patina some great age and actually a really great price on sale for 45 bucks 
So this is a fairly, uh, you know, nondescript, but very nice blue and white porcelain, uh, pewter bordered uh, stein. It's got a nice little figural pewter piece there on the top. Uh, didn't have any markings on the bottom, you know, so I was just kind of looking at it, looking at the inside. Thought there was something at the bottom and decided to hold it up and look what I found. So I've, I've not seen this done in a stein before. I've seen it, I've heard it in geisha ware and one of those things in the geisha teacups, you can hold it up and you would see the little uh, design in the bottom. Uh, so this was kind of a nice little surprise in a stein, uh, a porcelain stein that is, you know, if you look at it, it's not exactly thin walled. They just did all the design down at the bottom and uh, even, you know, looking at it, from the outside you have no idea that it's there it's a completely smooth base um but you've got that it's called lithophane you just got that pop up and this one instead of being a geisha it looks like a german couple which would be appropriate for a pewter lid did german stein i wanted to show this one because i did a video uh, probably a month or two ago and highlighted some artwork done by lionel barrymore and my comment was i didn't know lionel barrymore was an artist and that one was an individual piece that had been framed. And so here I am at the uh, Affordable Antiques of Naperville, and they have this entire portfolio of the gold etch prints by Lionel Barrymore. And so it looks like this particular set was provided as a gift from the Capitol Hill Savings and Loan Association, but they are that gold tone artwork uh, that I had shown in the original video unfortunately a lot of these look like they've got some condition damage though you can see there's a huge crease running down the middle of that one there's a big wrinkle in the top of that one this one's actually pretty good though i don't know there's a crease down there at the bottom too so unfortunately some of these either weren't stored very well i don't know maybe this was you know moisture damage but almost all like, all the ones i've pulled so far have some level of damage on them and some of it pretty severe but it's just interesting because I had seen that individual shot which I want to say was a Christmas scene and I don't see these all appear to be like boating scenes um, but you know just kind of variety evidently Lionel Barrymore was an artist and these are the pieces of art that he created okay, courtesy of Capitol Hill Savings of Loan of Oklahoma City I'm back from Affordable Antiques of Naperville and did actually walk away with a couple of items. Uh, so I'll do a, just a quick little haul video here at the end. Uh, one of them is uh, definitely for me. It is a book which I picked up. I didn't actually show uh, finding the book. It was though at the same booth, the first booth that I first walked into that had all the glass when you first walked into the mall. They had kind of the section that I showed, there was a little like a little mini aisle in the middle of their booth that had more glass. So I, I showed that on the video, but if you went to the other side, which was along the aisle, they actually had a whole bunch of uh, porcelain and pottery and a selection of books. And so this is something that I've talked about off and on. I have a collection of German and Austrian uh, secessionist Jugendstil pieces. And I kind of banter those terms around a little bit. You know, it's their, you know, the German and Austrian versions of Art Nouveau. Uh, so when I saw this book, I, it's one of those cases I didn't even know it existed. So when I saw it, I'm like, hey, you know what? There's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's one of those coffee table style books. It's going to be a lot more about the artwork and the illustrations than, you know, and hopefully there'll be some research in there as well. That I just decided it was $16.50 for a book that originally listed for 45 and I bought books like this before. I thought this was an extremely fair price. I didn't have to ship it, I didn't have to wait for it. And it's a little, it's like a little trusty carryover in life that uh, as you may have, if you've watched my video before, my videos before, you know, in my past life, I owned a retail quilt shop, a brick and mortar quilt shop with my ex-wife. And we were known for our collection of quilting books. And what became more and more common the longer we were there is people would come into the store, they'd find the book that they loved, they'd go through it, they'd look at all the great patterns or whatever it was for, and then they would actually have the, the nerve to tell us, oh, that's a great book, I'm going to go home and buy it from Amazon. Well, guess what? Our shop doesn't exist anymore. You know, that's not necessarily the reason, but so when I do find books like this, 
I do really try and make a mental effort to be like, you know what, $16 is a totally fair price for this. I'm paying it because I just don't like the idea, even though I could have gotten it cheaper someplace else. The reason this exists was because of that booth's work and curation, putting it into their into their area. Well, I'm going to pick it up, and I did. So that was really the only kind of keeper item uh, that I picked up because it was fun. You know, I do find items that I can resell. Every once in a while, I find items that I do want to put into my personal collection. This had a lot of things that were right on the verge. There was a cabinet I almost bought, but it was two inches too wide for the space I needed it for. Always carry your dimensions with you when you shop. Uh, but I did buy one other thing. I talked about this on the video. Uh, this was, I don't know if it actually says the name of the booth here. Um, it was the booth that I showed the the Pyrex, and I believe I actually showed the stack of these bagged items. So, you know what? I'm gonna you know put my money where my mouth is. If you, I have a lot of customers who purchase my mystery boxes on my live sales on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. on this channel, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, and they're very popular. And I do get a lot of positive feedback that when they receive them, they really are excited by what's in there. But those are great mystery boxes, but you do have to pay shipping for them. So I'm always sensitive to what goes in so it's not too heavy. I didn't have to pay shipping. So I picked up a, basically a mystery box. It says Betty's Bargain Bag Slash Box. Now, no offense, Betty, but I think it's hilarious. Did you not know that this is a bag? It looks like a bag. Of course, technically there is a box in it, but I just think it's funny that it says both bag slash box. Um... So it is booth 751, if you ever go there, so you want to find it. I'm going to open this live on air. So I'm going to have to adjust my camera to angle down. So I'm, there is going to be an edit, but you will actually watch me open this up. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you're getting a slightly different angle, but we will try and do this in a way that you will actually be able to see me open this. So it looks like it's just a shopping bag that they've wrapped around the box that's inside. I did pick this one in particular because there were... Only two bags that had like a box inside. The rest were bags that you could actually tell and she even wrote something on them. They were stacks of cookbooks. And you know, they, those could be interesting, but I didn't think they'd be as much fun to open live on camera. And this was something I was intending to do. So out of the two boxes or bags that had boxes in them, I picked this one because it made noise. <laughs> the other one was totally silent. So, you know, I'm sure there could have been fun stuff in there. It was just packed differently, whatever the case. But I was concerned that there might be a lot of books or something in that one, too. So I picked the one that had noise. So here we go. Let's see what we get. So it is taped shut, which is good because, you know, I'm sitting here rattling it around. I'm going to open it up. Okay. So I do this in a way to make sure the camera is getting it. So we're opening it up. Right off the bat, I see Red Wing. That's cool. I'm excited already. So I've got... Oh, I actually sold this before. It's called uh, Country Garden, I believe is the name of it. Uh, I think. But it's a little luncheon plate. Actually, it's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little... It's like it's Red Winged. It's it's like the... It's It's not quite circular the 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 edges seem to be a little bit higher on these sides than on these sides so i'm not sure this wouldn't be a luncheon plate i'm not actually sure what this would be so that's actually pretty cool so i'm already excited like that's probably worth what i paid for the box right there so that's fun i did get a cookbook so this one is casseroles and one dish meals so all right so we've got chicken and biscuit a la king right there on the cover Chicken ole, vegetable lasagna. Let's see what opens up. So some photographs, black and white. Um, you know, it's just one of those inexpensive. It has a barcode on it. So let's see. Does it have a date? Mm -hmm. well, let's see. Here we go. 1990. So not ancient, but definitely still vintage. And uh, scary to think what we were eating in the 90s. Like that's into my adulthood and... I like to make fun of things like that. But, so here we go. Got a little casserole dish. That's That'll probably end up in, um, this will probably end up, to be honest, in one of my mystery boxes. Maybe I'd sell it, you know, if I do an ephemera sale or something. But, so that's a little fun addition, so I'm happy to get that. 
Oh, cookie cutters. I've actually sold this cookie cutter before, so that's good to have. Got a pumpkin cookie cutter, got a Santa cookie cutter. Let's see, oh, a meat thermometer. I don't know, I don't have one of these. So if this cleans up, I might even just keep that. That might become a little functional piece that I keep for myself. So these are, looks like little melamine. Oh yeah, they actually do say Melmac. So they're little Melmac cups. So this is a good, this is a good box. So you've got the little Melmac coffee cups. I don't know if there's, um, there probably would have been saucers with these, but you know, this seems perfectly acceptable. Um, yeah, she was selling these once upon her time. She does some of what I've done with some of my mystery boxes. She left her price tags on there. So like, there's gonna be no question that I'm certainly getting my money's worth uh, opening the box. So these were once sold as 350 for the pair. That's actually a good price. So I'm surprised they didn't sell. So got, you know, just really pale colored Melmac. And, you know, for those of you who may not be familiar with the concept, like most people know the name Melmac. We all know it is the planet, the elf, elf came from. Uh, but Melmac was actually the material. And then you had other companies that produced it. This one was produced by Harmony House. So you got the logo for Harmony House on there. Um, what would happen was the companies would buy the raw material, and if they bought the raw, raw material from the company that made Melmac, then they could use the Melmac name on their dishes. But if they didn't, there was competition. There were non-Melmac companies that made the Melmine material. If you didn't use the Melmac brand, then you couldn't put Melmac on your dishes. So quality-wise, it's probably all comparable. It's just like whether it's Kleenex or generic facial tissue. Uh, but people do know the Melmac name, and Melmac dishes being marked that way do actually increase it, have a little bit more increased value. So again, three fifty for the pair of those is a really good price. And then we've got looks like some lucite or acrylic uh, salt and pepper shakers. You know, pretty simple uh, tower salt and pepper shakers. Got some. These were probably must have been what was making the noise. Either the clothespins or the cookie cutters, or maybe the clothespins ro rolling up against the cookie cutters. That was probably what was making the rattling noise. So you got three uh, little old-fashioned cookie pins. Got another uh, cookbook. This one, Great Foods Magazine. This was from 1985. And okay, I agree. That looks like great food right there on the cover. Uh, what I like about the way she did this, if you can kind of tell the way I was unpacking it, she was actually using these to separate the breakables as well. So ingenious uh, in keeping, you know, keeping that material apart. So you had the magazine separating this uh, random uh, saucer. I, it would, it's not, um, it's not Melmac. Color-wise, it actually kind of matches, but it's uh, this one is actually a uh, China uh, ceramic porcelain. Looks like porcelain. Oh, no, it's ceramic. Um, that uh, I don't recognize the pattern, and there is no uh, stamp on the back. Kind of a pretty, pretty pattern though. And there are people that just like to collect these to have mix and match. Uh, so that's kind of a fun addition. A couple random clothespins as well. So there's a total of five of those. Another book. This one is oh wow, this is going back to 1974. So we got Good Foods 1974. I did eggs look like that in 1974 because those look absolutely fake. Um, so April 1974. So another this was another um, monthly magazine. You know, love when you, you're selling food and you get the cigarette advertisements right next to the uh, avocado mousse. Oh my God, avocado mousse? That sounds horrifying. Okay, well, whatever. It was the 70s. Avocado and everything. Craft real mayonnaise. Um... <laughs> If you've ever seen uh, Julie and Julia, Julia and Julie? No, I think it's Julie and Julia. She talks about, she's uh, Julie uh, is a modern day woman who ends up trying to uh, make every recipe in the Julia Child cookbook. And she has to go through aspics. I don't actually know if that's an aspic. That might just be a jello. But it's eggs and shrimp. And that is just not appetizing at all. That, that, I, that looks repulsive. That looks like something Katie should be eating on her channel. Um, so maybe I'll send this to Katie so she has a fresh recipe to test her, test with. Um, but if, I didn't even notice the bottom of the picture. You can see the shrimp are sitting there formed against the edges like they're tortured. 
Um, so anyway, so fun. And then on the bottom is then the pair. So technically, like if people did want to do mix and match, you know, the way she did it, you could actually have the Melmac uh, cups on each on each saucer. She had two random cups and two random saucers, but they do match. So that's, that's actually pretty nice. And I'm fascinated by the Red Wing because you can tell it a little bit better now that there's something circular underneath it. It's the the it is a little bit oblong. So it must be, I don't know if it's a special kind of dish, but uh, I'll have to look that up. So all in all, this was a fun and absolutely well worth every penny that I paid for it. Uh, kind of a mystery box or what she called it, a Betty's bargain bag. Um, and now I kind of understand why people get so excited with mine. <laughs> and that's it. So that is my video from Affordable Antiques of Naperville, plus a little mini haul of the book and the fun Betty's Bargain Bag. So this was uh, an enjoyable time overall. Is I've only been to Affordable Antiques once before, and I got there pretty much right at the end of the day, and I enjoyed what I had. I just hadn't had a chance to see much because they were closing. So it was great that I could go back there. I originally planned on hitting two, if not three, different stores that day, and I ended up at, at Affordable Antiques for the entire afternoon basically there until almost they were closed again. So it's just a great place to, you know, disappear into. I, you know, got some great video. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, you know, doing some individual research. Uh, I had a lot of fun. It's still on the top of the list of possibilities of places that I might reopen uh, if I open another booth, booth location again. Uh, so it was great kind of checking it out from that perspective as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you've uh, gone this far into the video and you're not a subscriber, I do absolutely thank you for your dedication, but I will thank you again if you go in and actually subscribe. It does matter uh, how many people subscribe to the video. If you give it a thumbs up, that helps me a lot as well. And it helps YouTube the direct more people to see this kind of content. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and throw some comments. If you have some suggestions of video that you'd like to do, let me know some of the favorite things that you saw within the video. I appreciate all of that feedback, and I really appreciate you spending your time with me and putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Bye-bye.